Women of Reddit who chose to be a side chick to a taken man. Why did you do it? How did it end? Story 1. It was an open relationship, and it was big ol' mess. They pretended to be more open and chill with everything than they really were, but his partner was weirdly jealous of me and was convinced he'd leave her for me. She pulled these power moves where she made him cut short us hanging out one time and made him spend time with her, and I cut it quits then and there. I so wasn't down for juvenile shit like that. Ironically, she ended up leaving him for the other dude she was screwing. Story 2. I did it because I fell madly in love, or so I thought. He was a covert narcissist that played me like a fiddle. I was young, insecure, with a very traumatic childhood, in an abusive relationship. Recovering from a traumatic event in my life, I had no idea how to process. I thought God threw me a bone for once, and I took it with both hands without thinking of the consequences. I knew he was married, but somehow in the state I was, it never clicked that his wife truly existed. I don't know how to describe it. She was a distant entity, not a real human. I think it was my way of dehumanizing her so as to not feel morally conflicted. She found out and confronted me. Whereas in the beginning he told me he wants to leave her, he walked out, tried to move out, but she actually broke down and he decided to stay. Turns out when she was there ripping me a new one, he acted like a little bitch and said nothing. After this, he did not stop reaching out and begging me to continue the relationship, even though I told him to stay TF away from me and leave me alone. He tried everything to get me to talk to him. I did not budge. Now, this was a very painful experience that I truly believe managed to mature me emotionally. It effed me up bad, but I did learn from it a lot. If you, OP, or anyone else reading this are in this position, I do not judge, but only want to ask you why is an emotionally unavailable man good enough for you? Why do you love and value yourself so little? to not have your own man who is only yours and loves only you. I will never make the same stupid thing ever again. As the above questions clicked for me, and I value myself enough to get a good man, not someone else's cheating bag of dirt. For everyone else judging me or hating me, there's nothing more to say other than I'm sorry. I did something stupid, and I learned a lot of life lessons from it. Story 3. Oh one. I can answer. To clarify, I am not trying to justify what I did and fully acknowledge it was wrong. I'm just trying to explain what factors led to the situation. I had just started a new job and after a few months ended up completely falling for my married boss. I knew it was wrong and tried to keep my distance but we had a bunch of business trips together which resulted in a lot of one. One time. Mentally, I was in a really dark place. I had a string of dates that didn't go anywhere where I felt rejected and used, gained 40 LBs, and my self-esteem plummeted. Meanwhile, I had this super attractive, successful guy at work lifting me up, telling me I'm smart, beautiful, and that any guy who isn't into me is an idiot. Anytime I was with him, I would finally feel alive again and felt like we just had magnetic chemistry. He also admitted to feeling the same way towards me. We tried not to do anything, but after a year of tension, we finally ended up hooking up. I knew he was married. I knew it was wrong. I never met the wife, but thought she must be a much better person than I was. My colleagues had met her, and I knew she was beautiful, fit, and seemed really kind. I was at such a low point in my life that I would take the scraps just to be with him. It was a tumultuous relationship, and I tried to end it many times, but because we literally worked together in a tiny office and I still had intense feelings for him, it would start back up. I tried dating other people to take my mind off things, but couldn't, because I was so in love with him. I felt trapped and would frequently cry in the office bathroom, knowing I needed to get out somehow. I ended up breaking it off with him, resigning and taking a $1.70k pay cut just to get myself out of the situation ASAP. Then COVID hit, and the new company scaled back their operations, and because I was a new employee, I was laid off. I then spent the next year in a super deep depression, but eventually managed to get myself out of it. So I honestly didn't set out to have a relationship with a married man, I just kind of fell into it over time and made a series of poor decisions. The wife ended up finding out after I had already resigned. And I know she is the main victim here, and I feel terrible that I hurt someone innocent. I have since landed back on my feet, gotten a new job, lost all the weight I gained, and am feeling far more confident in myself. Obviously, I stay far away from married men. And if the situation had happened now instead of at such a low point in my life, I would like to think I would make better decisions. I guess I'm writing all this in response to the comments stating that these women are always heartless bitches who want to win over a married man. I mean, sure, that can be the case, but there are also situations which are far more nuanced. Story 4. I didn't know for two years, 
When I confronted him about making plans on FB to move in with another chick and accused him of having another women, he told me that technically I was the other women, but she was willing to let me move in with them. We broke up and he moved in with her a few months later. A year after we broke up, he called me complaining that she wasn't financially responsible and wasn't able to run a house as well as me. He asked me to move to Florida with him. I laughed at him and said he should have thought about that before telling me I was the other woman. Story 5. He told me he left her. He didn't. So I chose to out him to her every chance I could get. I, he'd send me letters apologizing or begging we stay together, so I'd mail them to her workplace so she could see what a loser she has. Well, he died at age 35. She got a $950,000 insurance payout, and I was left salty and bitter. Lola. Story 6. I'm opposite. He cheated on me with someone in our friend group. She is now one of my absolute best friends and my sister-in-law, a.k.a. I married her brother. He was 23, I was 21, she was 17. He was amazing at making you feel incredibly special and wonderful until he thought you were staying. Then he would slowly destroy you and your world. Also, she was a child and he was an adult. She takes none of the blame. Yes, we have talked about it and have agreed we are both better off without him. Story 7. I didn't know it when I met him. Clearly, he was a player, but I wanted to play. When I found out about his GF, I was shocked and embarrassed as I knew her personally. I didn't do anything wrong, and it was his mess to fess up to as I was not the only one. I moved on and grew up from all that. They broke up over it. She deserved better and got it. Story 8. Nurse here, who has seen many other women date married men, they do it because they think that they can steal a husband from another woman, and it works a surprising number of times. As long as the guy can afford the divorce, the alimony, the child support, and a second wife. Story 9. Honestly, desire. The thought of being desired so much that he was willing to sacrifice his living situation and long-term relationship was disorienting. It felt like a drug I couldn't get enough of. The heart-pounding adrenaline of watching him debate in real time if he was going to cheat, and then feeling him look at me and decide didn't want to, but had to. It was a drug, and I think that's the best metaphor because drugs are dangerous, and they ruin people's lives. Story 10. I didn't choose to be, but was unknowingly a side chick for almost a year. It still blows my mind to this day how long he managed to lie to two women for and how his wife never cottoned on as he was always with me. He had a bachelor pad in the city, told his co-workers he'd separated and paraded me around to them at events as well as coming to all my family and work events and coming on a few vacations with me all while checking in with his wife every few weekends when I thought he was going to visit his elderly mom. I met a few of his family members, but never his mom. His best friend finally told me at a dinner that he was still married and that I should have a chat with his ex ah. So I got brave and sent her a message on Facebook. It was wild. She was super nice to me. Kicked him out and I cut ties and blocked him on everything. She said that things hadn't been great. They hadn't been intimate in six years but were still very much married. She just thought he was working all the time. The weirdest thing was that a few months later, I think she must have taken him back because she started sending me super nasty messages. I understand that I was sleeping with her husband, but it was unknowing, and I think if I were in her position, I would have placed greater blame on my ex. All in all, if you have a choice in the matter, do not do it. Men who cheat are the lowest of the low, and we can all do so much better. It made me a bit sad that his wife turned on me like that but I kind of get it. I'm glad I spoke to her, though, because he could have kept it up for a long time. I've since upgraded big time and am engaged to a lovely man who is definitely not two-timing. It took a long time to trust again, though, and I hope anyone else who has been in this kind of mess gets their own happy ending. Story 11. Not me, but one of my friends who is still actively in her situation. She was a waitress at a high-end restaurant, and he travels with the NFL, not an athlete. He was married with three kids, nine, 16, and his wife was a say-HM. He wooed her with all of these fancy trips and started paying for her Botox and nails and shit. They started sleeping together about two years ago, and though he didn't have plans on leaving his wife, my friend's ex, who's a psycho-narcissist but pretends to have ethics, somehow found out, managed to somehow get a hold of his wife and spilled all the beans. My friend is now currently living with him in a one-bedroom apartment on the other side of the country. She won the man but is no longer benefiting from anything else. His salary was like $1.14k slash mo. But after paying his wife's mortgage, child support, and spousal support, he's only bringing in about $1.4k to the table now. No surprise, his kids absolutely despise my friend, and also no surprise, the fancy trips are no longer a thing. 
Story 12. I've done it with two different guys. I had horribly low self-esteem and somehow thought I was better than the girlfriends. I was trying to be the cool girl so much. It's funny because I didn't want to be in a relationship with these guys as they were cheaters, but I liked the attention. The sex wasn't even that good FFS. In the end, I got sick of being someone's naughty little secret and having to lie and pretend all the time. Years later, I went to therapy and wouldn't dream of doing it now. If I was single, I've been in a relationship for 2.5 years. Story 13. He wasn't technically married, but engaged. I worked with both him and his fiancée. I was single and in a very selfish mindset. I became fast friends with him and caught feelings, but was never planning on acting on them in any way. A different co-worker and I were talking one day and said that he had feelings for me too and thought I was attractive. Him and his fiancée were heavily on the rocks because he had just found out that she had cheated years ago at the beginning of their relationship. He figured he'd even the score and sleep with someone else. I was his go-to. I knew it was wrong, but I was entranced by the thrill of the secrecy, and the fact that we all worked together was just so hot. We agreed it would be a one-time fling, and I was fine with that. He then later tells me he wants to again, so it happens a couple more times. We would hang out at bars together and talk, and I started to fall for him, but I knew he would never leave her, so I ended it. They were set to be married a year later, so I gave him a chance to tell her, but he wouldn't, so I did. They ended up getting married anyway. I am not proud of this. It's my biggest regret. Story 14. I have an acquaintance who swears I cheating and claims it prolonged her marriage. She eventually divorced. She now sleeps with a few men, some married in relationships, but is looking to settle and claims those lovers are not good enough. I'm not sure if she's just deflecting or really thinks that. She really does feel a hell of a lot better about herself, claims to be a feminist. Burr has zero qualms about stealing men. She says everything is fine as long as Noon finds out. It really bugged me. A lot of PPL seem to know and are fine with it. I told her I don't subscribe to lying to PPL. You can try an open relationship or just not have a relationship altogether, but skip the cheating. Story 15. I didn't know I was a side chick. As soon as I found out, I was out of that. I am not ever that desperate that I need to share a man. He did get the shock of his life when I left him. I think he had a huge ego and was used to being the one who did ghosting and dumping. Never will I be an enabler for a guy to continue treating girls that way. It did wake me up to how horrible some people are, horrible and unlovable to me. No man is that special in my opinion. I turned down some nice guys when I agreed to start seeing him as well. I hate the feeling of being fooled. I feel sorry for his partner. Her life must be an insecure hell with him. Story 16 I did. I chose it because I wanted him. His marriage was already dead in the water. He cheated on his wife with me, kissed me. And the following day I told him we shouldn't pursue this and I would take the secret to my grave if that was what he wanted. He split up from his wife, moved out, and asked me on a date two weeks later. We've been married ten years and have two children. Story 17. Self-hatred and that I'm too mentally immature and weak to leave yet. I fell hard two and a half years ago. I had the impression he was single because he gave me undying attention and wouldn't sleep just to talk to me and open up. Once he started getting a little more distant three months into our situationship, he told me that he had a partner of over a decade. Funny thing is, I actually didn't believe he had a partner because nobody would tolerate their man talking to a risque cosplayer all day and night. Fuck that! However, after looking back, she was probably away on a business trip, or they were on a break, and maybe he thought he could try his hand at flirting with someone who gave him the attention he needed. Sometimes I like to think we gave each other Stockholm Syndrome Lamau. He never left after I confessed my feelings said I was confused by his bachelor-esque behavior, and said I was sorry for devoting my attention to him. He said he was sorry he couldn't give me a relationship. That was the point that made me feel like I couldn't leave because he would not let me go. I even told him to let me go once during an argument. I didn't ask about his wife and don't want to, but someday I'll be ready to leave him high and dry. A lot of the more loving things he does to me bugs me and makes me latch on more. And it's my fault for being unstable younger than them and far away that I can't be his main focus 100% of the time. Right after I learned he had a partner and that they were monogamous, I swallowed my pride and told myself I was just a talk every waking moment and share your entire life pseudo-girlfriend and that their love might fizzle out after 13 years together. We're still the closest friends and I'm trying to go the longest I can to just ghost him because I can't break this but I can disappear. My brain says they won't stay together, and if I brute force this friendship or lose feelings, which happens every two, three years, I might have a shot at happiness with him, but my soul says they will die hand in hand, and I will self-sabotage our entire friendship one day, 
and that will be that. Then I can move on to someone who is single and who actually loves me. As of now, I'm ignoring his 23 texts, yes, 23, and will just continue on as far as I can. Story 18. I was 16. He was 29. He made me feel beautiful and gave me attention. He also said he was going to end it with his girlfriend, and I guess I wanted to believe him. Of course, once he got what he wanted, and after a pregnancy scare, he stopped talking to me altogether. He never broke up with her. A friend lost complete respect for me for getting involved with a guy who was taken, and I lost even more self-esteem. Story 19. I fell in love with an incredible man. We connected as online friends over a mutual interest. The friendship was fast, near immediate. It was like we clicked almost instantly. As the months went on, our connection deepened, and we grew more vulnerable with each other. One day, he had the balls to bring it up. What is happening, and did I feel it too? I said I did. Each of us expressed feeling a level of comfort and understanding with the other that we had never felt so wholly seen and known before, not by anyone, ever, supported, accepted and wanted and welcomed. It felt like we were mirrors of each other, two halves of the same brain. We had our first phone conversation. His voice was perfect. We hadn't even seen each other's faces. It's not like we negotiated an affair, but we didn't hold back either. We chatted every single day for over two years. We lived in different states and managed to meet in the middle a handful of times. Those days were magic. During our times together, I felt complete contentment. I could breathe and relax. Being near him was a balm. His presence brought warmth and safety, peace. He was comfort and shelter. We propped each other up through some very difficult shit. I don't know if the details of our home lives matter, but things were bad for us both in that regard. It was all impossible, but we kept it together as long as we could. Time was extremely short for him, and we were both hurting badly over not being together. Plans were few and far between and often canceled. We were both losing, no matter how hard we tried. We were clinging to each other while we drowned. We weren't supposed to find each other, but we did. I want to know him in every lifetime. Hopefully in at least one of them, we can be together. Whatever souls are made of, his and mine are the same. My answer for him is always going to be yes. Story 20. Slept with a married woman for a while. She was a good person. She felt conflicted and isolated in her relationship and guilty about our tryst. I enjoyed being able to hold some of those feelings and showing her a glimpse of how being treated well could feel. Never pushed her in any direction. I think they eventually broke up and... She told him, but I was out of the picture by that point. I don't regret it. I catalyzed growth that needed to happen, and I have no obligation or loyalty to the guy. If his wife was fundamentally unhappy with their relationship, I did him a favor by making that clear enough that she could move on. Would have been someone else, if not me. Some people are in relationships they shouldn't be in. Some people are lost and hurting and alone in their relationships. They're still humans who crave connection. Yes, ideally we get a divorce before experimenting, but sometimes that's an irreversible step and we're not sure. We all deserve to explore how to live our best lives. It's sad that people are hurt along the way.